Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jambox. We're here. We're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And with that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Oolong Passion, a uniquely fruity tea with tropical blends of oolong, passion fruit, blood orange, lemongrass, and coconut. The Brothers Apothecary. Find teas and remedies. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, shout out the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. I guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Briggsy. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, where you're from, what you do. Give us that like Tinder profile of your involvement with music. Okay. Well, like I said, my name is Briggsy. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um, I make hip hop music. I throw hip hop shows and I'm oh, yeah. trying to try to take it global. Yeah. You're definitely doing some big stuff in the community, but before we dive into what you're doing now, let's start right at the beginning. What initially got you into music? I think music's been a big part of my family's history. Like mm -hmm. if you go from harmonizing in the car with my moms or just me and my dad getting into all types of hip hop music. Uh, we just like the sounds of the beats and that really moves us. So I think, you know, it's always been a part of my family's history. Yeah, definitely. And is are there any other like musicians or musical artists in your family? Or are you kind of like the first generation of like performing artists? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of like, we could say, you have my uncle, other two i think like all of my I, I, there's, a, there's a few i'm not the only one let's say okay that. cool so it's it, it just kind of been around you your whole life yeah oh yeah and what were some of the like earliest like songs you remember hearing what were some of like the earliest music they're like what was some of the earliest music that like influenced you i'll say what influenced me to start rapping was little wayne's got money okay uh, off of carter three yeah. yeah yeah that seems to be the running one yeah yeah that that was an influential one for a lot of people nah yeah i uh but not listening to the song it was me watching him perform on the bet awards that kind of mm -hmm. got me into like i i want to do that yeah hell yeah uh, no i love that um, and then this next question, this is one that we uh, we ask early, we ask often, and it's definitely a crowd favorite. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? Mm, I think in my day, it wasn't really like, I don't think you could buy an album. I mean, we start. I think I got streaming you. and stuff. The streaming out. was already kind yeah. of a prominent thing. <laughs> yeah. I think the first album that I listened to was Carter II. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know, fun fact, the uh, first album I ever bought with my own money was The Carter. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't still, gotten that one yet. I can still do the entire intro from memory. Like, it was just a really cool album for sure. But we, we're we not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about <laughs> Okay. Uh, what was it about? I mean, it seems like Lil Wayne has already been mentioned a couple of times early on in this interview. Was he like a bigger inspiration for you in the beginning? Yeah. Uh, and still to this day, like, I just like... Uh, I like Lil Wayne's wordplay. His mm -hmm. beat selection is pretty cool, too. And I like the imprint aspect of what he was doing, too, with Young Money. And mm -hmm. that's why I, I plan to do it with my own my own label called Timeless Makers Entertainment. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, hey, isn't that the, isn't that the name of your EP? It's Timeless Maker. There we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the name of my EP. But uh, yeah, it started with me, and I'm hoping to build it up. Gotcha. So. Well, we'll dig into that a little bit more in the middle here. Uh, this next question is kind of in the same vein. What was the first live show you ever went to? That was like one you wanted to go to. So you saw it was happening, you got tickets, and you went to it. Well, I didn't buy the tickets, but my mom bought me the tickets, mm -hmm. and <laughs> it was to see Lil Wayne. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right. Very good. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was Lil Wayne, T.I. Uh, Jeezy was just coming up around that time, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was... It was a great, it was a great experience for sure. It was in Las Vegas. Uh, he performed at the MGM. Oh, damn. Yeah. So it was like, 
It was like a big show. Yeah, it was a big, it was a Damn. big show, and I had pretty good, good seats. So yeah, it was a, it was a great experience. Oh yeah. Well, shout out to moms rapper. for that one. Yeah, shout out yeah, to moms for sure. Man, what a solid first show to go to. That's an yeah. experience for sure. To your favorite rapper, yeah, I, I think it was a dream come true. Oh yeah, I love that. All right, and then before we get on into you in the current day, this last question is kind of a the a turning point one. But do you have a defining moment where you decided you wanted to take music more seriously? I would say when I left Arizona. Okay. When I left Arizona, I was like, because, you know, once you're in it, you're in it, you know. And so, like, once I said, you know, I want to, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. When I came back home, I said, I have to, I have to do everything to make it, you know. So that, I say when I left Arizona is when I. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, that's, I mean, the solid reason, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, you know, it, I could just tell kind of by your charismatic aspect and the music in general that you definitely, you've taken it pretty seriously for quite some time now. Yeah. But let's go ahead and let's get on into it. And we're going to get a super easy one out of the way. How'd you pick the name? It's my last name. Well, yeah, it's my last name. Mm -hmm. But I remember in, I think it's called Sun School, you know, when we had those after school programs, mm -hmm. one of the coordinators used to what's up my name is sean and so she used to be like hey what's up sean briggsy and briggsy always stuck out to me it used to be sean briggsy when i was younger mm -hmm. but i was like eh, i don't want to use my real name i like the briggsy aspect of it so i'm gonna just take briggsy and that's what we're gonna run when we're gonna run with the family name hell yeah and is that i mean is, is it even the same even in spelling or did you add in the extra z I took out because it's spelled B R I G G S. -S oh, okay. But I took out the S and then added the Z Z Y to the end. Gotcha. Of it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was kind of curious because that was an interesting spelling of it, but it's definitely a solid name and it, it's easy to remember. You know, yeah. I mean? like it's not one of those ones that you're going to forget super quick. So yeah. it definitely stands out well, but it feels comfortable. It does feel like a name almost more than like, like a, you know, like a stage name kind of thing. So yeah. I think you really landed it there. No, yeah, for sure. But now let's go ahead and let's talk about your writing process. And we're going to break it up into chunks, but we're going to start right at the beginning. When you get inspired, you're ready to make a track. What are some of the things you do to get one started? It always starts with the beat for me. The beat has to... I'm real selective with my beats. And lately, like, I've been bringing a lot of people to the studio and they'll tell me, like, I have good beat selection. So it always has the beat. It has to be the beat for me. And if the beat's there then usually I can, if I'm flowing, then mm -hmm. it, I can go straight through it and I can knock it out within one or two hours. Oh, damn. But sometimes it might not just be flowing. Sometimes the track, it might take a little while. Like you might be able to start it that night, but then probably won't be able to finish it until like three days later, you know? So it yeah, really no. just depends on the mood and the vibe and really how you feeling at the time. Oh, yeah. And do you pick out beats from like multiple places? Do you have like a guy you get them from? Do you work on your own at all? How do I'll you go say about multiple that? places? Okay, cool. And like, do you do you use like certain sites? Are you like one of those people that just scrolls through YouTube? How do you usually come across them? Uh, I'll go through YouTube. I also like to hit up different. I like well now I've just been starting to hit up different producers mm -hmm. from YouTube. I mean the ones that I like and yeah. just see what they have. And then I've been trying to work with producers in the town, you know, because. I feel like there's a lot of people who don't get their shine here that I feel like should get their shine here. And, you know, why not do it together? Yeah, no, there's definitely a ton of talent in the area, especially now. I think that it, it's kind of rooted itself in it for a little while. And a lot of people have really dialed in their process. So I appreciate you going that route. Yeah. Being on the city is definitely, definitely a good thing to do. Yeah. And then once you get a track finished writing, so it doesn't have to be like out and released per se, but once you've finished writing a track, how long does it usually take you to get comfortable feeling until you can perform it? Mm. That's a good question. You came with the questions today. <laughs> but uh, it usually, well, now we, because uh, when we started, we have no songs. So yeah, we could do songs that were unreleased, you know, but mm -hmm. we don't really... I like to perform songs that's out. So if it's out and we feel like it's going to grab the people, then we'll do it instantly, you know, but yeah. we don't really like to do a whole bunch of unreleased tracks just because, you know, they're not, they're not out and people don't know them yet. And if we keep performing the unreleased, I mean, 
it's a supply and demand type of thing. If we keep doing it, then I mean, I guess they will. Like, hey, drop that one, you know. But yeah. we just choose not to do the unreleased, and we just plan to. We just choose to do the ones that we feel will grab the people the most. So no, totally. It's out. Then we'll do it that next. Year. We'll just like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, more, I guess the 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 question was more asking how long does it take you to get comfortable with a track to the point where you can perform it. So like once you've written it and it, you know, like, does it take you like a week after you've written it to like have it memorized? Does it take you a few weeks so you can like practice choreography? Uh, like, how do you, how long does it take you to feel comfortable performing it? Mm, yeah, probably a week. I mean, yeah, probably a week. Okay. Yeah. I just had to listen to the song over and over again. And then, I mean, also you wrote it. So it's like, yeah, yeah. you just gotta, yeah. It's just really how, how confident you feel in it, but it usually just takes me a week. Okay. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it, it very much that seems to be the theme is once you've put it down, you've heard it so many times. Yeah. Just going through that you're gonna know it in a pretty short amount of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then looking back on let's say all of twenty twenty three. Cause you know, you've been putting out music since twenty twenty, but you've been obviously doing it for a little longer than that. How has your process changed in the last year? I would say as far as writing? Yeah. Or, okay. I would say you know, uh, we just started, uh, like, I'd say in the summertime around August, mm -hmm. we did a session for a week. Okay. Yeah, and we were just in the studio. Like, some songs were finished, some songs weren't. Mm -hmm. And that was my first time just actually just being able to just sit down and write in the studio. Like, being forced to write with, like, a time limit, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because, like, when you're at home, you have all the time in the world mm -hmm. to finish the song. And so... Uh, I say now my process like I'm starting to learn how to write under pressure. Let's, okay. Let's yeah, just kind of get it, get it out quicker, more concise. Yeah, because sometimes like you never know. You be in a studio with somebody else, like yeah, I need a verse real quick, and yeah. like you got it. I mean, if it's hot, then you got to lay it down. So mm -hmm. yeah, just been trying to learn that way, and then I've also been trying to learn how to freestyle a little bit too. Okay. Yeah. So and then you mainly do like pen and paper. Pen and paper always. That's my favorite. That's my hey, favorite. you know, right. honestly, I, having having spoken to so many people now, there there's really not a wrong way to go about it. I feel like some people they are just they're just so quick with it, and then there's some people that are just nasty with the pen. You know, yeah. I mean? like when they have you give them ten minutes uninterrupted, and they're gonna come back with something that like people can't even freestyle. Yeah. So like it's I don't think there's a like a right or wrong way, but I think there's something to be said for being able to like call on the opportunity to to do both. Yeah, and like you know it. It'll only it'll only enhance your ability to write quicker if you can freestyle as well or if you like can't think of a spot you could just be like i'll just do it in real time uh, yeah. so there's nothing wrong with having both tools in the tool belt for sure uh, yeah Free the people who can freestyle they amaze me like a lot just because like man it's crazy how you can put so many sentences yeah together and then be clever with it too mm -hmm. like yeah, I gotta, I gotta step into that bag. So. Yeah, it's it's a whole another world for sure. Yeah, but I mean, like listening to what's available, just you know, on Spotify alone, you have a really consistent sound. Like you've definitely, you've clearly got your sound going, and it's very, um, it's very distinct. Like it's easy to tell that it's you, because I mean, you definitely have a handful of tracks with other people. I've seen see Louis on a few of them, but like yeah. I said, every time I hear one of the tracks even with features, it's easy to tell that it's you versus anybody else on the track. And I mean, even checking out your more recent stuff, you know, like outside your most recent single that just came out this year yeah. is a super solid track. But if I had to like pick my personal favorite, I'm going to go out of order on this one. I'm going to do my honorable mention first okay? because uh, Our Way off of your uh, Timeless Maker EP, uh -huh. that one really jumped out at me. Okay. Uh, if I like the one I'm going to pick is uh, What Goes Up. Oh okay. yeah, off the album, same guy my, or not the same guy? That's sorry. my dad's favorite too. Oh, it's it's just it. I mean, the, it had that super classic vibe with like the bells and the melody, and you were like you were low key gassing it the whole time. Like you you somehow kept it super lax but going. Yeah, and it just like it felt like you really had a message in it, and like <clears throat> excuse me, even the like the layers and the hook added just this like really dynamic element to it. So like yeah. I said, that if I had to pick a track, that's the one I would go with. Nah, but yeah. I'm super curious to know, what is your favorite track to perform? Well, with the band, it was, we liked, I love to perform Hood Rich because mm -hmm. my keyboard player, he rips it at the end. And that's <laughs> I my, could believe that. That's my favorite, that's my favorite track to perform. But now, 
We got this new song coming, Dangerously in Love, that we just performed at. Okay. Last show. Yeah. That's my new fa- that's my new favorite to perform. Hell yeah. So Hell yeah. And what are some things that you like about it? Like what makes it like the one that you really enjoy? My keyboard player be doing this thing. <laughs> that's what, if he was it if he didn't kill it at the end, then it would still be hood rich. But yeah, I just love the way he stressed his uh solo at the end of Dangerously I mean both songs, but his part in Dangerously in Love is a little bit longer than it is in Hood Ridge. So that's why I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my new favorite. Oh, yeah. No, I love that. And just because I, I don't get to get out a lot because I'm doing these all the time. Do you perform with like a full band, full band? Or do you have a couple instruments accompanying you? Nah, yeah, I have a full band. I have keyboard, bass player, guitar player, uh, drummer. Yep. I, yeah, I did. Yep. <laughs> and we just added uh, background singers now. Oh, no. So you were like... You're like a full production. Yeah, we keep trying to, uh, you know, make it better and better each time because we do our own shows, so we just want to give the people experience every time they come to the show. Yeah, no, totally. And that, I mean, that's that's pretty full on to have a full band backing you already, but to add like background singers as well. Like, I imagine now you can't even play smaller places because you can't even fit on the stages. Yeah, we just did a show at the Alberta Street Pub, and it was packed on the stage and packed like around the stage so we're like yeah next next venue we do most definitely has to be a lot bigger than alberta street pub but shout out to the alberta street pub for letting us do the show there oh, yeah yeah that's awesome i mean that's that is a good direction to be moving you know what i mean yeah. like and then i guess um looking at let's look at some of your music that hasn't come out yet some of the tracks that you're working on using more like descriptive words how would you describe some of the elements of new music that you're working on that you enjoy Elevation. Okay. I okay. say, uh, yeah, I say that we uh, we trying to reach a new level of uh, a new sound. I would say uh, every year I try to step it up. Uh, last year, I mean, I feel like from the Timeless Makers EP, mm-hmm. I did a lot of singing on there, and then on not the same guy as a lot of rapping, but there's also singing. But you also hear like the melodies and. Mm-hmm. You hear a lot more. I I think there's a few live instruments in there, but it wasn't enough. So like this next project, I kind of want to go like the live instrument route and okay. add some live instruments in my beats. Yeah, I mean I perform live, so like why not add the live element to that? Yeah, I was gonna say it'd be, it'd be cool if you even went a route where you like did some of your old songs like as like a, like not maybe like a full album, but like a little EP that was like old ones but re- reperformed with the band. No, nah, yeah, interesting experience. It's been it's been a request, so I might have to make that happen for the people for sure. It's it's been asked of me. Oh so. yeah, well y'all hear heard it here. It's a maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and then um we're gonna zoom out a little bit we've talked about you know we've dived really inwards on your music but we're going to take a step back and look at music as a whole so like current music at the moment what are some of the things about new music that you really enjoy um i say it's always going to be the beats for me like Mm -hmm. it has to if the beat if the beat isn't there then i can't i can't really get jiggy with it but like if the beat's there and then i'm also in the melodies too i feel Mm -hmm. like Chris Brown, Summer Walker, somebody else. I mean, Bryson Tiller's new album just came yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yep. was fine. Yep. No, I love that one too. That one, that one was hard too. There was somebody else. But yeah, I, I'm real big on melodies and harmonies, like, because mm-hmm. I do that a lot on my music. But yeah, I'm a real big R&B hit. So yeah. Like, I re- like, I relate to the rap. But mm-hmm. I relate more to R and B. No, totally. And right now, I think we're starting to see a resurgence of more of that. A lot more melodic elements in music. A lot more focus on beats, especially beats with live instruments. That seems to be the direction we're moving. So you're kind of at the front of a sound that's swinging upwards, anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, before we move into the next portion here, this last question is probably the densest question we have in the interview. But we talked a lot about, you know, your experience with music, the actions, the reactions, things like that. But when it's just you and the music one on one, what does music give back to you? I say it picks me up like when I'm down. Like, I feel like music, it's like my second emotion, like when I'm happy. I could play a song that's going to make me even more happy. Or if I'm mm-hmm. down, I could play a song that's going to cheer me up. Or like, you know, if I'm feeling motivated, play a song that's going to motivate me. You know, I feel like music, it's like my second emotion. It it, hel- it helps me uh, 
get through whatever I feel like I'm going through, or it even picks me up when I, uh, I'm down or even if I'm already happy, it makes me more happier, yeah. you know? It's going to say it, uh, it elevates you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your own word for Although I like that. I like that definition of the second emotion. Yeah. Because a lot of people will describe it as a like, oh, you know, it helps with this, it fixes with that, or it like helps me to express this. But like that concept of addition by music, that's, that's actually really enjoyable. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to some hypothetical questions. Okay. And for these, sky's the limits. The questions are all made up, so the answers are allowed to be as well. But this first one's pretty straightforward. If you could work with any one person, the only requirement is they have to be alive. Okay. Who would you want to work with and how would you want to work with them? You know, I was thinking, I know that. Hey. I should have said Tyler. I, I, <laughs> that's what I was thinking about. I, I don't know why he his hit, but I want to work with Tyler, uh, the creator, and it had to be on some, uh, like on some R and B, like because his R and B bag is oh yeah art, so it had oh, to yeah. be like on some R and B stuff. No, that, that's a great. Also, not a common answer, which really surprises me. Like, and no, when you asked the album question, when you asked me that, I was like, dang. I just got through that whole Igor album and I brought and I rocked with that whole album, but I rocked with that one and then I rocked with uh, Call Me If You Get Lost. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't know why, I don't know why that didn't pop up, but yeah, Ty Tyler for the album and Tyler uh, for the collab too. Hell yeah, yeah, that, that's a great answer for sure. Yeah, and then subsequently, who's a local artist that you're aware of that you haven't gotten to connect with yet, but you would like to? Well, I, well honestly, I just. There's somebody I wanted to work with for a long, I mean, not for a long time, but I mean, for a few months now, mm -hmm. at least for the remainder of this year, I wanted to work with him. I finally just got him in the studio. So, okay. Okay. So do you not want to say who it is? Cause that's the secret or, uh, nah, I shot him out. That's my guy. Uh, Jay Cortez. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, I just, I, I came across this page, uh, on on instagram and mm -hmm. i was like yeah I gotta, I gotta work with this guy i got a few songs that i feel like he'll sound good on no and we only knocked out one for sure so i hope to get him back in we knock out some more but yeah it was it was great having him in the studio i got yeah. i got a video coming out with that like just showing our process of how we worked in the studio is gonna drop on tuesday oh, okay hell yeah. yeah so that's that's super exciting that like i said that sounds like a really good pair nah yeah hell yeah all right, and then for this next one, like I said before, sky's the limits, and it's pretty literal in this sense. But if you could perform anywhere in the world, and you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access or building stability or power, it's guaranteed the best lineup, guaranteed the best show, and it doesn't have to be a venue. In this in this concept, anywhere on earth works. Where would you want to perform? You mean like events or like country type? Uh, yeah, it, it, if you if you can think of it and it's on the planet, you could do it. Dubai. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I wanna, yeah, I wanna go to Dubai. Man, that would be lit. Like that. Just the stories I've heard about the place in general. It's, it, you know, that that's like a whole different party. Nah, yeah. I, I gotta go there before I die, bro. I have to see Dubai. I mean, it's definitely accessible. Did you know they have something there? From what I've heard, they have something there that they can control the weather. Nah. Yeah, yeah. They can like based off of weather patterns and stuff like that. They like send these things up that way they'll like add water in or like do something to like charge the air and they can actually in a certain area they can control what the weather is gonna be like. That's great. Yeah. What is the world coming to? Man, I don't know, but I would I would appreciate a little less rain here. No, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then to wrap up the hypothetical questions. If you could get one more album from anybody, they could be alive, they could be dead, they could have just put out an album yesterday, they could have not put out an album in 100 years, who would you want an album from? Tyler. Hell yeah. <laughs> Tyler. Hey, if you didn't say it, I was going to say it. Yeah, That's nah, I, I say he said he's not dropping nothing the rest of this year, but I just, I, and I just got into Tyler, but yeah, I'm... I'm ready for that new album to drop. Yeah, no, for sure. Actually, after you leave, I'm probably going to watch his Coachella performance. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely looking forward oh, to yeah, that. Oh, yeah, Coachella going on right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm a, Well, I'm going to tune in when it's just up, but yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to tune into that. Oh, yeah. All right, but now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start wrapping this up. What can we look forward to between, let's say, now and October? Now and October, well... Next Friday, we got uh, Dangerously in Love, new single dropping next Friday, so make sure you check that out. 
we hope to do more shows, more in the city, more outside the city. Uh, we working on the project right now. Hopefully we can be able to drop it, um, you know, in the summertime. And we're planning on tour. We're planning on okay, tour. Okay, okay. But we're going to see how the rest of this year goes. But we plan on going on tour. Oh, yeah. And if you go on tour, you're going to bring, like, the whole band in, the backup singers and everything like that? Or are you going to kind of do a more slimmed down thing? I'm going to bring the whole band. And then I have one I have one artist on my label I plan on bringing, too. His name okay. is Nidex Jalen. And I'm going to bring him along with me, too. Oh, yeah. Hey, guaranteed opener. That's never a bad thing to have anywhere you go. Nah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I got to make sure wherever I go, I put on... Yeah, and even, I mean, I'll bring him, but I'll also bring, like, you know, a few people that I rock with. Like, I'm big on putting on the city. So yeah. I, I like to bring out whoever I feel like, you know, has been killing it. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, For this next one, go and look straight into the camera and tell everybody how they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at briggzy.tme, B-R-I-G-G-Z-Z-Y.tme. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, X, uh, TikTok, that way. And then on all platforms, Briggzy, B-R-I-G-G-Z-Z-Y. I'm on all platforms. So Apple Music, YouTube, Spotify, Tidal, I'm on it all. Check me out. Hell yeah. And then uh, any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you'd like to put on while you're on here? Um, yeah, shout out to my engineer, Nick. Shout out to my guy Maurice for helping me with the songwriting for the new project. Shout out to my guy Not X Jalen. He on TME. And shout out to my manager Fly. Uh, shout out to mom. Shout out to dad. You know, shout out to everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a great shout out list. <laughs> All right. Now we've got one last question to go. But before we do, I'm going to steal the camera for just a second. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And one more shout out to the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. I guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, the final question. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. Okay. But what is an album you feel is more on the obscure side of things? It's a little more, more of a deep cut. It's one maybe not a lot of people would know, but it's one you think everybody should know. I think everybody should know uh, Soft Thing by Looney. Uh, she gives, uh, she has like an R&B soul type of vibe. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, she's she's hard. I think everybody liked that album for oh, yeah. sure. Uh, it's not often I get one that I haven't heard already. So I'm definitely going to check it out as well. So thank you for the recommendation. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. But with that being said, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining us. Today. Oh yeah, appreciate you for having me. Yeah. And this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Briggsy. And we're signing off later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast. This is a show. Keep jamming.